watching The 7 from WATE 6 on your side. Good evening, I'm Bo Williams, and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories right now. And topping our list for you tonight, one woman still desperate for answers seven and a half years after her husband was murdered in Knoxville. Paul Shepard Jr. was working as a taxi driver when he was killed in June of 2014 near the Montgomery Village Apartments. It was only a second day on the job and something he only did to help make ends meet. Almost eight years later, Shepard's wife Beverly just wants answers, especially from those responsible. I'd be happy to be able to talk to them and say why, what happened, what were you doing, what, was, what were you trying to accomplish. Just answers, and I know I'll never get them, but that's what I need is answers. Police say they've talked to several people who witnessed the shooting and have developed leads over the years, but say they need more. It's not the first time officers have revisited the case. This video is from 2016 when they went back to the scene of the crime seeking answers. And if you have any information on Paul Shepard's murder, you can submit a tip to East Tennessee Valley Crime Stoppers. You can call 865-215-7165 or go online to EastTNValleyCrimestoppers.org. And yes, you can remain anonymous. An appeal for a new trial has been denied for the three people convicted of shooting local hero Xavion Dobson. You may remember Dobson was killed while he was shielding his friends from gunfire. His death sparked a citywide conversation and prompted calls for an end to senseless violence. Well, this decision comes after video evidence was used in the trial of Richard Williams, Kipling Colbert, and Christopher Bassett. We're told the evidence was pulled from a YouTube video of the group rapping. Now, prosecutors used the video to connect them to a gang whose graffiti was left on signs at the scene of a shooting. Williams and Colbert challenged the use of the video in the trial, but the appeals court upheld the original ruling from three years ago. Next in the Big 7, the TSA is seeing a dangerous spike in people carrying guns on the planes or the secured area of airports. In Knoxville, 21 guns were found in carry-on luggage last year. That is compared to just seven in 2020. Bigger City saw an even higher number of guns brought through security. You know, last year, 163 guns were seized from passengers through Nashville International Airport and 67 from the Memphis Airport. That's a significant jump for both cities. Now, we should note the penalties are pretty high for bringing a gun in your carry-on. You'll face a fine of up to $13,900 per violation and lose your trusted traveler status. Firearms can only be transported on a commercial aircraft if they are unloaded, packed in a locked, hard-sided case, and placed in a checked bag. Next on the Big 7, today marks one year since two Knoxville men, 25-year-old Jonah Caldwell and 23-year-old Marquise Nolan, were shot and killed. That deadly shooting happened at the Mag Lounge on East Magnolia Avenue. Now, family members of the two men still searching for answers as a suspect for this case has yet to be arrested. They've raised the reward fund up to $5,000 to find a suspect. Police say there were a lot of people at the lounge that night of the shooting. They need someone to come forward with what they know or to send any pictures or videos taken inside or outside the lounge on the night of the shooting. Investigators believe the suspect may be in the Detroit, Michigan area and traveling back and forth between there and Knoxville. If you have any information on this case, you can call the East Tennessee Valley Crime Stoppers. Again, 865-215-7165. And as we mentioned before, you can remain anonymous. And the reward for information about missing Hawkins County five-year-old Summer Wells has now increased. The Churchill Rescue Squad says the reward fund is now over $73,000. You know, it started with $35,000 thanks to two large donations. The rescue squad still working with local, state, federal agencies in the search for summer. And the Tennessee Amber Alert for her still active. If you have any credible information that can help investigators, call the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation at 1-800-TBI-FIND. Next in the Big 7, we are learning an embattled Middle Tennessee judge will retire in September. You know, we told you about Judge Donna Davenport last night at 5. Right now, there is an ongoing push to impeach her over claims that children were wrongfully arrested. According to documents in a federal lawsuit, the policy mandated that accused children always be arrested and taken into juvenile detention, even though state rules might call for them getting a citation and being released to their parents. Judge Davenport is not admitting to wrongdoing, instead saying her decision to retire comes, quote, after prayerful thought and talking with my family, end quote. Next on the Big 7, the website to order free at home COVID-19 tests launched one day early. 
As we've been telling you, the Biden administration is making sure Americans have access to testing by launching covidtests.gov. Now, through the website, every household in the country can order up to four free at home COVID-19 tests. Now, there will be no shipping costs, and you will not need to put in a credit card number to order them. To place your order, simply head to covidtest.gov. The White House says tests will typically be shipped within 7 to 12 days of ordering. Meanwhile, the University of Tennessee Medical Center reported another increase to their number of COVID-19 patients at the hospital. Uh, as you can see on the right side of your screen right now, if you look at the orange in the bottom of the screen, you can see the number of ICU COVID patients remains, though, fairly unchanged. You've got the rise, but then along the bottom here with the ICU patients, not a big change from day to day. Now, it's a similar story for Covenant's hospital system. COVID-19 hospitalizations still on the rise, but the number of COVID patients in the ICU has not seen a significant change. Of course, we'll have an update from the Knox County Health Department on the current local COVID-19 situation tomorrow. We'll have it for you right here on WATE 6 on your side. And to our last Big 7 story tonight, some Sevier County Electric System customers questioning why their most recent bill was so high. Some say their bills jumped more than $100 since the last billing cycle. Well, the program's administrator, uh, administrator for Sevier County Electric says there are a few reasons this could be. Lucas Harkel Road says on average it will cost about 30% more to heat your home compared to cooling it in the summer. Your two big ticket items that drive your energy bill. Number one is your heating and cooling, heat in this case. Uh, number two is your water heating. Those two represent about 60% of your total consumption. Sevier County Electric crews can do things like check your billing history and your meter from their offices to help find out why your bill may be higher. They can also send an inspector out at no cost, and we will share more about that for you online. Just go to WATE.com.